Hello everybody and welcome to another C++ tutorial for beginners. Now in this video, I'm going to be discussing for loops. Now before I do that, I would love to hear your thoughts on my new kind of office setup here. I'm using a much better camera. Hopefully the audio is sounding maybe a little bit better. I have no idea. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, as I said in this video, we're going to be discussing for loops. This is going to allow us to actually repeat something a set number of times. Very useful, very important. And with that said, let's dive in. So we're going to dive into the syntax of a for loop in just one second, but I quickly want to state kind of the problem that a for loop solves for us. So previously you would have seen that if we wanted to do something multiple times, we had to actually write the code to do that thing multiple times, right? So if I wanted to see out, say something like hello world, and I wanted to do this multiple times, then I had to actually take this line and we'll paste it. And actually from now on, this is a good point to talk about this. I'm going to be running my code right from sublime text. So what you can actually do to run your code in here is you can press control B. At least that's the key that I've set up to run my code. I'm not really going to go through the entire setup here of how to do this because it can be kind of complicated. Uh, but anyways, I'm not going to go to the terminal. Some of you rightfully so said that's kind of a waste of time. Just run the code in sublime text. So that's what I'm doing now. Anyways, you get the idea. We printed hello world three times. But now what if I tell you, hey, print hello world 25 million times or something crazy like that. Are you going to copy and paste this code that many times? Are you going to go and count that many lines? Probably not. And well, that is where a for loop comes in. A for loop allows us to repeat something or loop over something a set number of times. When we know the number of times that we want to loop, we use something called a for loop. Now there is situations in which we don't know how many times we want to loop, and that is when we would use something called a while loop, which I will discuss in the next video. Anyways, let me show you the syntax for a for loop. So when you define a for loop, you say for, you put your open and closing parenthesis, you put your open curly brace and your closing curly brace, and then you define what's known as your iterator. Now an iterator is simply a variable that keeps track of what iteration in the loop that you are in. So when I say iteration, that is kind of one sequence or one step of the loop. So if this loop is running 10 times, we're going to have some variable that's keeping track of, well, what iteration are we on? Are we on iteration zero, which would be the first iteration? Are we on iteration one, two, three, four, so on and so forth? And that variable is going to tell our loop when it needs to stop running. So as soon as the variable gets to say 10, then we're going to go ahead and stop looping because, well, this loop has happened 10 times. Anyways, let me show you how we define the iterator. So the first thing that we do is we define a variable that's going to be our iterator. So we say int x or int i is kind of traditional is equal to and then zero. And then we put a semicolon. Now it's worth noting here that you can start your iterator at whatever value you want. And it's going to be easier if I just go through one simple example and then talk to you about all the nuances. Uh, but just keep in mind that you can make this variable whatever you want. This is not necessarily need to be an int type, uh, but I won't really talk about any other ones than int because this is kind of standard practice. Anyways, int i equals zero. And then what I'm going to say after this is I'm going to say i is less than, and in this case, I'm going to say 10. And then I'm going to say i plus plus. Now, what I've just done is I've defined the three criteria that I need for a for loop. I need to define my iterator variable. So initialize this to some value. I need to pick my ending condition, and then I need to decide what my increment is going to be every single loop. So what this for loop really says here is set i equal to zero loop while i is less than 10. So while the value of i is less than 10, keep looping. And then we say i plus plus. What this means is every single time one iteration of this loop completes, add one to i. I showed you what plus plus did previously. When you do plus plus, it just adds one to i. Uh, you also could do something like i plus equals three, right? And then that would add three to i. You could say i equals i times three. That would multiply i by three. So whatever you want, you just have to change the value of i here so that it goes up or goes down based on what you're doing. If you don't increment this, like if you just did something like i equals zero, you're going to have what's an infinite loop. The reason you'll have that is because the loop will never stop running, right? I will never be less than 10 and you don't want an infinite loop. That's something you always want to avoid in programming. Now, one small thing here, I will note some people prefer to use the syntax plus plus I. I didn't discuss this. I, I don't think I discussed this actually. This is a just different way of kind of incrementing this variable. I don't really want to get into all of the details, but I know some of you C++ masters out there are going to comment that it's probably better to do plus plus I. 
then do I++. For our purposes, these do the exact same thing. You can look up the difference if you want. I just wanted to note that either of these ways is acceptable. And some of the kind of, I don't want to say older, but maybe more experienced C++ programmers would say plus plus I is uh, preferred. Anyways, we're going to go with I plus plus just because that's what I've shown previously. And now let's actually, you know, see how this works. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. It's what helped me land a job at Shopify and at Microsoft. And while I can just highly recommend the platform, of course, I also work there as well. With that said, check out Algo Expert from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platforms. So I'm going to say C out and I'm just going to C out I. And then after this, I'm going to C out an end L. So the idea here is I just want to see how this for loop actually operates. So inside of this for loop, I'm going to print out the value of I, which is our iterator variable. So let's go ahead and run this code and let's see what we get. We get zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Now, the reason we get this is because on our very first iteration, so the first time we enter this for loop, I is set so that it's equal to zero. Then what we do is we print out I, we come back up to the top of this for loop and we increment I. The reason we increment I is because after this first iteration runs or after any iteration runs, really, we're going to do whatever this says right here, which is incrementing our, uh, our variable here, incrementing our iterator. So then what we do is we check if I is less than 10. So I, in this case, after we've done the first iteration is going to be one. And so one is less than 10. So we run the for loop again and we repeat this process all the way up until we get to nine. Then at nine, when we do our increment, that changes I to 10. 10 is not less than 10. We stop running the for loop. So that is really the basics. That's how a for loop works. Now, you can put a ton of other stuff inside of a for loop, right? I can say something like if, and let's do something like I mod two is equal to zero. And then maybe only in the situation where I mod two is equal to zero, what this really means is I is an even number or equal to zero, then I print out I. So let's just quickly see if this works, if I made any mistakes here. So if I say if I mod two equals equals zero, then do this print statement. You can see we only print out all of the even numbers and that's going from zero to 10. So now let's look at another or a few variations of the for loop. So if I change I to say be equal to five, then that means that I is going to start at five. So if I starts at five, uh, when we run this for loop, let me just get rid of this if statement right here. Uh, let's just do that. OK, if we run this now, you see we get five, six, seven, eight, nine. The reason, again, is because we started at five. Now, if I start I at, say, negative five, let's run this. And you see now that this loop runs 15 times, right? So that is kind of just the basics of the for loop. So you can start I at whatever you want. You can make this whatever you want. You can make this condition something that will never occur, but of course you don't want that to happen because you don't want to run into an infinite loop. And in fact, I don't want to show you an infinite loop because it's going to crash my recording software uh, with the way the sublime text works, but do an experiment on your own computer if you want. Okay, so sorry, I realized I was kind of just rambling on there. What I'm trying to say is that if you want to see what an infinite loop looks like, and just take my word for it, essentially just means the loop never stops running. But if you want to see what that looks like, you can change this condition to something like I does not equal negative six. And since I will never be equal to negative six, this condition will never be false. Uh, and that means that this will just run continuously. Now, another thing that you could do is you could make it so your increment here is just invalid or just doesn't do anything. You say like I equals zero as your increment. And then, well, what that's going to do is, again, run you in the same situation. You're just going to constantly have I being equal to zero and that will be an infinite loop. So again, you guys can experiment with that on your own. I'm not going to show you that here, but I will show you some more variations of this for loop. So let's take another one and put it down here. And now let's uh, just look at another variation here. So let's say that I actually don't want to increment going upwards or I don't want to have my iterator go up. I want it to have I want to have it go down so I could start I at say something like 10. I can say while well, I is and in this case, let's say greater than and make it greater than, um, I don't know, let's go zero. Then we can say I minus minus. Now what this is saying is start I at 10, decrement I, so subtract one from it every single time. And then while I is greater than zero, continue to print this out. So if I run this now, you see that we're gonna count down. So we're gonna start at 10, we're gonna count down until one. Now we can count down by more than just one, right? I can say I minus equals two, and now if I run this, we're going to count down by two every single time. I could count down by five if I want and notice that we just get two things printing out. Now, if we do something like if I is greater than 11, right? 
then what you're going to see is that this for loop will never run. The reason why this for loop isn't going to run is because i starts being equal to 10. 10 is not greater than 11, and so we don't do any iterations, we don't do any increments, the for loop doesn't run. So that is really the basics of the for loop. Now, the reason I showed you arrays before I showed you this is because I want to show you how you can loop through an array. So a very common thing to do in programming is to have an array and to loop through that array or to kind of initialize an array from a for loop. I'll show you how you do both of them. So let's create an array. We'll just make an int array. We'll say int x and we can just make this equal to like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and in fact, actually, let's make it something different. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, 30, 40. Just add some more unique elements in there. So we've declared uh, a variable called x and this is an array and it's storing these values. So very simply, what I wanna do is look through this array and I wanna print out every single one of these values. How can I do this? Well, we have this very convenient variable here called i and I can use i to actually access the indices of this array. So if I change i to start out being equal to zero, which is the first index of my array, and then I want i to loop up until we're done with all of the elements, right? So I need to figure out how many elements are in this array essentially. And then I increment i by one, I can use this variable to access the elements. So let me show you what I mean. If I say something like i is less than, and then the size of, and we're gonna take x and divide that by the size of, and then we'll just say x zero. What this will do is this will tell us the number of elements in the array. And the reason why this is going to work for us is because I will loop up to, but will not include the number of elements that we have. So let's count this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're gonna get nine here when we look at the size of. The last indice is eight for our array. And so that means that I will go to eight. And then as soon as it hits nine, it will stop looping. And so we won't get any weird kind of index errors or anything like that, because we're only gonna be accessing elements in this array uh, that actually exist, right? Or positions in this array that exist. So what I'm gonna do now is see out X at position I, I'm using this iterator variable that we've just talked about to actually access elements in this array. So let's just have a look at this here and see if this works. Uh, and I got some type of error. I will be right back. Just gonna have a quick look at this. Okay, so I realized I did the wrong declaration for an array. I work in a lot of different programming languages, not an excuse, but just a lot of times I just forget the syntax for languages. And obviously, as you guys know, I'm a pretty beginner in C++, but anyways, I realized that I need to put this over here. So int, x and then the parentheses and then we can initialize our array like this so let's try this now let's see if this works and we don't get any errors i believe let's look up here and you can see that we now print out all of the values in this array by accessing them from the indice now what we could do is we could look at say every other value in the array right if we wanted to do that then we would just change this to i plus equals two and now what you're going to see is that we access every other element so we have five seven nine twenty and then forty so that is kind of the basics of looping through an array. Now, another thing we can do is initialize values in an array using a for loop. So let's just create an array. We'll say int x, uh, and let's say that we want this array to have five elements. So int x, give it five elements. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna say i is less than five, which is the number of elements in this array. What we also could do is the same thing that we did before. So just size of x divided by size of x at zero, that will still work for us as well. In fact, let's leave that. We're going to say I plus plus, but now instead of just printing out these elements, what I'm going to do is actually assign these elements. So I'm going to say X at position I is equal to, and let's just make it equal to I. Now we can make this equal to whatever we want. We could fill this array with say tens or hundreds or something like that. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to make it equal to I. So X at position I is now going to be set equal to I then what I'm actually gonna do after this, so after I set this, is I'm gonna run another for loop, and this for loop is just going to print out the, uh, the values of x so that we can see what this array looks like. So hopefully that's clear, but let's run this and see if I made any mistakes. Looks like all is good. You can see we get zero, one, two, three, and four. So actually, sorry, this shouldn't be printing out. Let me remove that print statement. Let's run this again, and there we go, okay. so. Technically you saw the same output twice, but I should have only been printing here. I didn't want to print up here. So again, the idea here is that we wanted to fill this array with some elements. In this case, I just filled it with whatever value I was, but I could also fill it with say the squares of I, right? I could say something like I multiplied by I. Now, if I do this, notice we're going to get all the squares. So zero, one, four, 
9, 16, we could do all the cubes. So let's do that. And we get 64 at the end, or we could do something like just a static number like 100. And now you can see that we just have a bunch of 100s in this array. So there's all kinds of other stuff that you can do with for loops. We're gonna be using them a lot in this series. And I think here is where I'm gonna leave off as kind of a really good introduction to for loops. So hopefully this is clear. Just to quickly recap, we have the definition of the iterator variable. This does not need to be named i. You can name it whatever you want. You can start this value or this variable, sorry, at whatever value you want. You then have your condition. So while this condition is true, you are going to continue to loop. You can put whatever condition here here you want. And then you have your increment, your decrement, or really just the change to the variable i. So usually you're going to use plus plus, you could use minus minus, or if you wanted to go by a custom amount by like two, three, four, then you do something like plus equals minus equals. You could even do something like multiplied equals if you really wanted to. So that is the basics of a for loops. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I will see you in another YouTube video.